So Napoli currently sit in third place in Serie A with 36 points, two points off leaders AC Milan. They've won 11 games, drawn three and lost two in those 16 games. And up until this week when they lost to Atalanta 3-2, they were the high flyers in Serie A, leading the pack through August, September, October and November. Their manager is 62-year-old Luciano Spalletti, who has been a mainstay in Italian management since starting his career at struggling Empoli in 1993, where he would stay until he went back down to become Empoli's youth team manager, before getting a job again in 1995 and keeping it until 1998. He then had spells at Sampdoria and Venezia before he would start to make an impact at Udinese, during his second spell in 2002. At Udinese in a 2004-2005 season, Spalletti would take the club to an unexpected fourth place finish and a Champions League spot. At the end of that season, he would leave Udinese to take the job as manager of AS Roma. Spalletti would start to use a 4-3-3 system in Rome using Francesco Totti as a false nine centre forward, arguably the first manager to really use this in the modern age. Spalletti took Roma to three consecutive second place finishes between 2005 and 2008 and then in December 2009 after getting sacked by Roma a few months earlier he would take his first job outside of Italy with Zenit St. Petersburg. At Zenit he would win the Russian Premier League in 2010 and 2012 whilst also bringing back a 2010 Russian Cup title as well. Spalletti then went back to Roma in January 2016 following Rudy Garcia's sacking and in the following 2016-17 season he would take Roma to a second place finish before deciding to leave at the end of the season. In June 2017 he then took the Inter Milan job finishing fourth in his first season, getting Inter Milan Champions League football which Inter Milan had failed to do since 2011. Spalletti then took Inter to a second consecutive top four finish the season after before getting sacked in May 2019. He had two years off from the game and then took over at Napoli in May 2021 but before I get into that I have now set up a Patreon where for £5 a month each week you'll get two exclusive videos and a newsletter, one video will be voted on by patrons and another will be an exclusive Manchester United video as well. The weekly newsletter will be rounding up all the week's events from across the Premier League and Europe. So if you want that exclusive content and to help support the channel, a link will be in the description. Any contribution to the channel would help, including watching the video to the end and giving the video a like, which will all be very much appreciated. So out of possession, Napoli are statistically the best team in Serie A, having the lowest amount of goals conceded and having the lowest XG against with 12.75. We see Napoli press man to man in the opposition build up phase in their defensive third. We normally see Zielinski and Ruiz push up ahead of Lobotka to man to man press the opposition's deeper lying midfielders in their build up phase with the centre forward Victor Osimhen or Dries Mertens cutting off the passing lanes into the opposition deeper lying midfielders while simultaneously applying pressure to the centre back as the wide midfielders Lozano or Politano on the right and Insigne on the left apply pressure to the full backs and the back line of Napoli also push high up the pitch as well to man to man press the opposition's front line. In the middle third, Napoli sit in a narrow, vertically compact 4-4-2 shape with the front two allowing the opposition centre-backs to have the ball, thereby using their zonal defensive shape to force the opposition out wide with the centre cut off. However, a lot of Napoli's defensive solidarity in the middle third comes from their excellent positioning to cut off the passes forward. You see here Lozano on the right side of midfield is cutting off the passing lane to the player in behind him in the half space, whilst one of the front two also cuts off the pass from the centre-back to the deeper lying midfielder and this forces the opposition to move the ball out wide where there is less space and therefore their play becomes predictable and easier to defend against. When in their own half they do drop and continue to be fairly passive however not only do they retain a horizontally compact 4-4-2 shape but they also become more vertically compact as well with Koulibaly marshalling the back line to push up the pitch and therefore reduce the space between their midfield and defensive lines. Defensively Napoli's back line is phenomenal with Rui and Di Lorenzo being excellent one-on-one -on -one defenders and Koulibaly is still an elite level defender which alongside Manoles when he's fit gives Napoli two very good defenders in Mario Rui and Kostas Manoles although we have seen Romani play whilst Manoles has been injured alongside two elite level defenders in Di Lorenzo and Koulibaly. In central midfield Spalletti does have Anguisa and Diego Demi who are industrious ball winning midfielders but instead he uses a midfield
full double pivot of Fabian Ruiz and Stanislav Lobotka, who aren't really either ball winners and are definitely better in possession, but they do do a fairly good job defensively. Lobotka's FB Riff report shows that he ranks in the 90th percentile for tackles completed, but he, like Ruiz, really benefits from the positional discipline of the whole system. David Ospina is Napoli's keeper and has been excellent in the last year. Not fantastic aerially, but in terms of his shot stopping, he is very impressive, which is shown on his FB Ref report from the last 365 days, as he ranks in the high 90th percentiles for save percentage, goals against, and post shot XG minus goals against, which is positive 0.2, meaning that Ospina statistically saves his side 0.2 goals per 90. So Napoli are fantastic defensively, the best in Serie A, but they still have great offensive ability as well, being the fourth highest goal scorers with 34 goals, just five goals off the top goal scorers, which are Inter Milan with 39. But Napoli do rank in sixth for their overall XG with 25.96, an overperformance of about eight goals from their XG, showing how good their finishing has been. From their build-up, Napoli sit in their defensive third with Ruiz and Lobotka dropping into a deep double pivot position, and the centre backs drop off into the box to receive the ball, with the fullbacks also sitting relatively deep. The reason for these deeper positions is to draw the opposition higher up the pitch and with the ball playing ability of Napoli's back line, particularly from Di Lorenzo and Koulibaly, in terms of their forward passing abilities and the fact that Lobotka and Ruiz are very press resistant in deep areas, allows Spalletti's side to either play out of the opposition's press, with them being drawn up the pitch and out of position, or looking for a direct pass into one of the forwards to move the attack forward quicker. The front three sit high up the pitch with Lazar in Insigne, either side or Mertens or Osimhen, pushing the opposition fullbacks backwards in the middle third. And in the middle third, we do see Napoli's shape shift to a 3-1-5-1 shape, with Insigne shifting in field as Rui pushes forward and Di Lorenzo holds a deeper position on the right to create a back three shape in possession. However, sometimes it does resemble more of a 2-3-4-1 when Napoli are looking to transition the attack a little quicker as Insigne and Lozano sit higher up the pitch, looking to make runs in behind the opposition position's back line, with Rui sitting in the midfield line alongside Lobotka and Di Lorenzo, with Zielinski and Ruiz being the players to drift in between the opposition's midfield and defensive lines. Ruiz and Zielinski are both top level players in my opinion, Ruiz is more of a roaming playmaker, having the ability to aid the build up in his own half, with his passing and ability to swivel out of pressure and making him key to Napoli's ball progression up the pitch. In the middle third he's an excellent long passer, able to play those long passes to switch the play or find long did passes over the back line for runners like Insigne and Lozano. As you'll see from his FB ref report, Ruiz is not a ball winner, ranking quite low for tackles and interceptions, but in possession he's outstanding. The eight key metrics for creative midfielders are expected assists and shot creating actions for creativity, progressive passes, progressive carries and dribbles for ball progression, and non-penalty goals, non-penalty XG, and non-penalty XG and expected assists combined for goal scoring. When compared to every other midfielder in Europe's top five leagues over the past 365 days, Ruiz ranks in the 60 68th percentile for expected assists, the 96th for shot creating actions, the 87th for ball progression, the 91st for progressive carries, but just the 33rd for dribbles completed. But when it comes to goal scoring, we can see that he ranks in the 93rd percentile for non-penalty goals, managing 0.2 per 90 and overperforming his 77th percentile non-penalty XG by 0.1 per 90, showing how good Ruiz's shooting ability is, whilst he also ranks in the 72nd percentile for non penalty XG plus expected assists, showing that in terms of progressing the ball, creating and finishing chances, Fabian Ruiz is putting out top level output. Zielinski is more of an advanced playmaker, sitting higher up the pitch whilst Ruiz drops off during the build up phase. Zielinski, rather than holding his position in midfield, will make runs ahead of the play, using Insigne's movement deep to be a trigger for him to push up further forward. He isn't as good as Ruiz in terms of his ball progression and overall playing the role of a creative central midfielder, but in the final third his goal scoring ability is just as good if not better. He's a fantastic striker of the ball around the box and from just outside, which has seen him score 4 goals in 14 Serie A games this season and scored 8 goals in 36 Serie A games last season. It is quite overlooked how important goals from midfield can be to a side, as if you have players like Ruiz and Zielinski who can shoot from around the box, then you don't have to play that extra one or two passes around the box to create a clear-cut chance as these players like Frank Lampard or Yaya Torre before them have this shooting ability to score from outside of the box. Having Lozano and Insigne on the flanks playing the inside forward role 
perfectly suits them as they're able to make diagonal runs in behind the fullback using their pace and are also open wide for one-on-ones when they maintain their width in the final third which enables Napoli to quickly switch play and attack the opposition down a different avenue. Insigne is Napoli's main creator in the final third having the ability to come inside on his right foot, take up those narrow positions and play those passes in behind the back line for runners like Hervin Lozano and Matteo Politano as well. Insigne also has the shooting ability from outside the box when in the final third he can cut in on his right foot and look to wrap his foot around the ball placing the ball in the far corner. So Fabian Ruiz and Zielinski offer the ball progression in the middle third and the ability to shoot from distance around the box. Insigne offers the creative ability to create chances when in the final third and players like Lozano and Politano are the players making the runs. When we look at Insigne's FB ref report over the last 365 days, we can see how good his output actually is. When compared to every other attacking midfielder and winger in Europe's top 5 leagues, he ranks in the 90th percentile or higher for expected assists with 0.29 per 90, assists with 0.32 per 90, with short creating actions, progressive passes, progressive carries, and even interceptions and passes attempted, all ranking in the 90th percentile or higher. For Lozano, who is definitely more of an inside forward than a creative playmaker like Insigne, he ranks in the 80th percentile or higher for non-penalty goals with 0.36 per 90, non-penalty XG which he overperforms with 0.34 per 90, non-penalty XG plus expected assists he also ranks in the 85th percentile, was ranking in the 90th percentile or higher for progressive carries and touches in the opposition penalty area. Now Spalletti not only has two top level wide attackers at his disposal but also two top level centre forwards. The first is Victor Osimhen who is a tall very aggressive centre forward who has the ability to hold up play, you can play the ball into his feet and he's very good at using his strength to hold up the ball, hold of the centre back and link the attack or make runs into the channels and look to use his pace and power to get into chance creating positions. His offensive aerial ability is very good, making him a target from crosses, as he showed against Leicester in the Europa League. But also when the ball is at his feet in the box, he's also a very cool finisher, having the composure to get the ball out of his feet and place the ball past the keeper. When we look at Ossim Hen's FB ref report, we can see how good he is. He ranks in the 95th percentile for non-penalty goals when compared against every other forward in Europe's top five leagues. He ranks in the 94th for non-penalty XG, whilst also overperforming his XG by 0.1 goals per 90. Even when look at his combined non-penalty XG and expected assists, it shows he ranks in the 93rd percentile, showing that Ossim Hens one of the best all-round centre forwards in terms of being able to get chances for himself, but also create for others as well. Whereas Ossim Hen is more of a target man, a industrious centre forward, an advanced forward who's going to make those runs down the channel, Dries Mertens is a lot more intricate, he drops off from the forward line, playing more as a deep-lying forward to link the attack, but around the box he still has some great output, he ranks in the 91st percentile for non-penalty goals with 0.62 per 90. This does come from when he comes off the subs bench, though he does start a lot of games as well. He also ranks in the 70th percentile for expected assists when compared to all other forwards, which is quite impressive. And for shot creating actions, he's ranking in the 87th percentile as well. So Dries Mertens is an all-round very good forward, both in terms of creating chances for himself and finishing them and creating chances for others. So he's a great backup striker to have. So that was my analysis of Luciano Spalletti's Napoli, both in and out of possession, as well as looking at their key players. If you like these sorts of videos, remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications. Check out my Patreon, which will be linked in the description below, along with some other videos that I think you may like as well.